Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be talking about post-processing and why do I think post-processing is one of the best things that Unity made. And as you can see behind the scenes, I'm, I'm working on a isometric room. This isometric room is pretty, pretty minimalistic, and but it, but it shows you some of the power of post-processing. I'll be walking you through the process of activating the post-processing pack and you know, where do you get it from? How do you get it working? And basically showing you the structure in the project. So let's actually get going. All right, so this is the scene that we're gonna be creating by using the post-processing effects. So let me walk you through the setup. So right now we're looking at the an, an isometric view of a little apartment that I built. And if you look at this image, you can see that there's a little bit of blur behind the character. We have the character, you know, more, more defined, he's in focus. So I'm using depth of field uh, to achieve that. I also have big netting around the isometric building. That's why there's some darkness on the edges. And there's also bloom coming, coming out of the, the white bed. So you can see the little blur lines on the bed and I also have a light coming on the first floor another light on the on on the second floor so on the actual project I have I have the camera which has the post processing effects activated except the post process debug and I'll, I'll walk you through and explain to you what that is I also have my directional light so if you go here and we change the the colors you, you can see how that affects the scene and then I have two different spotlights that's actually what's creating the representation of you know lights on a car reflecting on the character so if I go back to the view the editor view you can see the two lights uh, well those are actually the ones that are coming through the windows the ones on the car are these two and if you can see this is actually not a real car i just put a block in there just to just to get a better idea on where they should be positioned so two spotlights for that one spotlight on the on the second floor and one other spotlight on the first floor with a little bit of red on it and the the beam lights that are going through the windows those are actually two different meshes where i'm applying you know, a little bit of alpha. And I also have a, a texture associated with it, which actually has a, a black background and a little bit of white in the inside, which where the white is a little bit blur, so it causes that effect where you can kind of see, a, it looks like a beam light from far, but it's, you know, all it is is just a mesh. If I were to change this, you can kind of see how I can adjust the beam lighting. I'm actually going to leave it a little bit stronger so you can see we can see that better through the windows. And okay, so that's basically that setup. So if we go back to the main camera, let me show you how, you know, let me walk you through some of these effects. So normally when you when you download the post-processing effects for Unity, it used to be that they were available through Git, and now Unity made it part of their package manager. So if you go to Window, and then click on Package Manager, and if you, if you look at in, in Project, you can see everything that I have installed so far. So we're focusing on post-processing, so I already installed it, but if you don't have it installed, simply go to All, and then go down through the post processing and just hit it hit install and that will install for you i had issues where it you know i downloaded it i install it i apply you know i added the all the three scripts that are required and nothing happened so make sure that you close out of unity and reopen unity and then for so for whatever reason that makes them work so i already added them to the camera but if you haven't added them just simply you know, type in post-processing and select the one that you need. You want to start with the post-process volume first and then the layer and then debug after. So that's what I did right here. So 
on the if I remove, I'm gonna I want to show you how this looks like without any post processing effects attached. So that looks really bad. <laughs> But that's how we start. That's how you know you want to get your scene set up first and get all the lighting in place before you start adding a post processing effects. And you also have you know if we wanted to control the weight, we can use this setting. And if you don't know what some of these properties means, you can simply just hover over them, the priority, and then the profile. So. To start with, you won't have a profile, so you will have to create a create a new profile. You can create multiple profiles and attach, and all it is is basically a profile. It's a file that contains all these properties that are set. So you could literally have multiple cameras with multiple profiles. So and now we come down to the effects. So if we look at the effects that I have activated, I I have ambient occlusion, I have it set to off, but if you wanted to use ambient occlusion, you're welcome to. For this scene, I, I didn't wanna I didn't wanna use it, even though it's activated, it's actually off. And then one that I'm using is the bloom effect, and that's what's casting the bloom on the white. So if I were to turn it off, you can see how that goes away. And then you can also play with the intensity. If I want it to be that very, very strong intensity, also with uh, with a thresh hole, that's actually way way too strong. But let me just undo undo, and then I use fast mode as you know as much as I can just to boot performance. The other thing that I'm using here quite a bit is depth of field. So if I were to turn this off, you can see how the computer behind the character is also is actually focused now. And if I if I set it to on, the character is focused. And we can play with some of these, you know, the focus distance if we want the character to be visible and the computer visible, you can change the focus distance. You can also use the aperture and the focal length. Another setting that I use quite a bit when I'm dealing with depth of field is the post processing debug mode. And the way that this works is you have a variety of debugging overlays that you can activate. So if you want to if you wanted to you know try and see how ambient occlusion looks like from a debugging standpoint meaning like if I'm let's say that I'm working on depth of field the way that it works is anything that is in red it's what it's going to be visible and anything that is not in red it's what you know gets blurred out so if I'm playing with depth of field and I go back here if I set it to gray everything on the scene is gonna it's gonna be blur so if I deactivate the debugging mode you can see how that affects that so if I go back to you know I want I want the character to be the one in focus so I'm gonna you know do that and then deactivate the debug mode I play with that with those you know two I activate it and deactivate it and then when I'm happy I pretty much just keep the post processing debug off so I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave it like that. And then the other thing that I have in this scene activated is the grain. So it's really hard to see, but there's a little bit of grain going on on the scene. So if I were to change the intensity and wanted to make this scene, you know, look like a like an old school TV, then I would do something like that, increase the intensity. If you wanted to have, you know, the dots be color, you can activate the color setting. I'm going to deactivate it. Let's actually bring it back down to about there. Pretty happy with that. And I'm actually gonna go back to the depot fill and I'm, I'm gonna inactivate it because I want you guys to see the entire scene. So I'm happy with that. I already show you what the grain was and vignetting. So if I deactivate vignetting, you kind of see where, you know, there's no dark spots around the building. But if I activate it, and we have different modes. If you wanted to create a classic, it's where it's computed. If you do a mask, what you can actually do is bring in a texture and then control the mask yourself. I normally just do classic unless I'm doing you know, a mobile game and I want it to be really optimized. I wouldn't really, look, I wouldn't really do classic. So same thing here, if we wanted to you know, control the darkness there. Just change the color, and if you wanted to change the center, you could as well. 
and the intensity of the vignetting. And when we have other settings, if you wanted to have it a smoothness, roundness, and if you want it to be rounded or not, you can control that as well. So that's what vignetting is. And then I use color grading quite a bit because um, I really want to control all the colors in the scene. I, I personally like really dark games, so I use these quite a bit. And you have different settings if you wanted to do low definition range, you can do that, high definition range, or external. And then the tone mapping as well, I'm using ACES in this case. And so if I want to control the temperature of the game, so let's actually go, so that actually creates more of a blue type scene. Actually going to go back, also the same, the same way with the tint. You can play with a lot of those settings that control all the lighting. And depending on your story, depending on your game, you may want to change some of these settings and also the post-processing exposure. So if I increase the value, you can see how, you know, maybe that is the intro of the game and you start animating some of these values down. Uh, I'm gonna keep it around there because I'm happy with that. You can change the filter, the hue shift, sat saturation, and then the contrast of the scene. I'm using the contrast in here. Let's actually bring it, bring it down a little bit. And then if you wanted to control the you know, channels in a specific, you could do that, green, uh, the red, the green, and the blue. And that pretty much covers color grading. And that's really all I wanted to cover for post-processing. So just to show you how the scene looks like without post-processing, and look at how the scene looks like with processing effects activated. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining my channel. I appreciate your time and I hope you enjoy this video on post-processing effects for Unity. And if you have any questions, let me know through the comments. And again, don't forget to share these. Don't forget to subscribe because that's what's gonna keep me making more and more videos. Thank you again, guys.